Hello K1, I hope all of you all are well as we get uh, fall underway and uh, hopefully very soon uh, we'll start back meeting. Um, I was told on the DL that there's a possibility we may be able to start meeting again by the end of September. So we just pray into that and see what God has for us. Uh, in my, in my uh, discussion this morning, uh, what I want to do, I felt like God say, you know, don't, don't, don't skip over the scripture that we've been reading a lot uh, in 2 Corinthians and I'm going to, 2 Chronicles, and I'm going to read it again for you. Uh, I said, don't skip over it, go back. And so what I want to do is I want to spend some time uh, today talking about humility, God's pathway. Humility, God's pathway. Uh, we are in a season uh, now where it's very easy to point a finger at someone. This person, that group of people, those people, they don't understand, they don't know. It's very easy, given all of what's going on in our world, to point a finger. And what I felt like the Lord is saying is that it requires humility, and that's the pathway that God wants us to take is a, is a humility pathway. That's his pathway, and that's the one that he wants us to take. Let me uh, reread. I've read it several times uh, over the past few weeks and months. Uh, this second Chronicle 714 scripture says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Again, if my people will humble themselves. Um, what's important about this is that the only way you would pray, and the only way you would seek his face, and the only way you would turn from your wicked ways if, you, if there was some humility in you, if, if you felt that there was nothing wrong with you and how you thought and how you behaved was perfectly fine, there would be no need to pray and seek God's faith and face and turn from our wicked ways. It's in our humility that we recognize we need to do all of those things. It's in our humility that we realize we need to pray. It's in our humility that we realize we need to seek His face it's in our humility that we realize that uh, we've got to turn from our wicked ways um, and turn towards God. That requires humility. And apart from that, we won't pray. Apart from that, we won't seek His face. Apart from that, we won't repent from our sins. And so that's part of the reason why the world looks the way it looks is because there are a bunch of people who have no humility, godly humility, that, that they would point the finger at themselves and say, I need to, I need to seek God's faith, face for myself about my own stuff that's in my life. I'm not suggesting that you go searching for stuff that's in your life, but when you humble yourself, the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance, to your, your, your consciousness, all of the stuff that's in you that you need to repent from. He will if we seek God's face. We don't even have to go and search. Uh, but let me give you a definition of humility, which I think is very interesting. Uh, humility, biblical definition in the word humility in the, the New Testament, it means uh, a deep sense of one's littleness. A deep sense, a, a deep understanding, a deep consciousness of how little you are. Let me put that in perspective for you. James 4, 4 says, Your life is like a morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. Psalm 102, 11 says, My life, this is David, passes as swiftly as the evening shadows. I am withering away like grass. Psalm 144, verse three to four says, 
Oh Lord, what are human beings that you should notice them? Mere mortals that you should think about them? For they are like a breath of air. Their days are passing like a shadow. And so if you think about these scriptures and you think about how fleeting a shadow is or the fog is or the grass is or a flower is, um, you, you think about how quickly a, a flower dies. You, you buy roses or something and in seven days, if that long, the roses are pretty much all dead. The, all the, the, the buds of the flowers are falling off. So it's it's over, and so this is this is the this is the mindset that we have to have about our life, so that we recognize that our lives are really precious, but they also are very little. They're 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 in the grand scheme of things, they're fleeting. And I know when you're like 11, you think 50 is old, uh, but when you get to be 50, you're like, oh, 50 isn't that old. Um, but, but what's interesting is that this is the perspective that we have to have so that we recognize how, uh, what's the word, how significant and how uh, delicate our lives are so that we won't, we won't waste our lives. But that's a, that's a humility, that's a perspective of someone who has humility who recognize how fleeting their lives are. Let me give you another perspective. This is 1 Corinthians. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Here's what happens. When we become Christians, we recognize that we are giving our life to God. And so our lives no longer belong to us. We don't even, we don't even own our own bodies. And so to have the humility to recognize that I was bought with a high price, the price of the blood of Jesus, is so significant and so powerful that we have to realize, you know what? The life that I live isn't even my life. To walk like that daily requires a degree of humility. To recognize, you know, what I do, how I think, how I live my life, the actions that I, I take, the way I behave, it's all based on the fact that I've given my life over to Jesus Christ, that he, that he bought me. God bought me with the blood of, of Jesus. And so, like the scripture says, it says, you do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. To be conscious of this every single day requires a degree of humility. And I think it, it, it prevents us from thinking we're all that when we recognize I don't even belong to myself. It, 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 makes me, it makes me realize I shouldn't be pointing the finger at someone because I don't even own myself. Here's another passage of scripture that puts us in a mindset of humility. This is Psalms 24 verse 1. It says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. Do you realize everything that we own, everything that we have, all of it belongs to God? Well, God didn't go to work and work for it. Well, Scripture says that it's God who's given us the ability to actually get wealth. So whatever we've done, we've done because he's given us the, the ability to do it. 
So we can't even take credit for the ability that we, that we have to be able to go to work to earn the money that we have. We, we can't even take credit for that. We can't take credit for anything. God owns it all. We can't walk around and pat ourselves on the back and say, hey, look how great I am. Look and see how wonderful I am. Look what I did. Look how I did it. Look how great I, I am about this and how wonderful I did with that. I mean, we can't even really take credit for that because whatever abilities and talents we have, we got them all from God. So who among us shouldn't be walking in humility? Who among us uh, shouldn't, shouldn't be, be circumspect about how much we owe God? How significant God is to our life and our being in the smallest way and in the most significant way. God is, is responsible for the totality of our being. And, it's re and it requires us to have a humble heart to actually move forward in a pathway that God has laid out. Um, it's pretty profound. But let me, let, me, let, me show, let me show you how easy it is to get off track. Right, let me show you how easy it is to get off track. Uh, this is Isaiah 14, verse 12. And this is, what I'm reading is, is about Satan. Uh, Isaiah ver, uh, chapter 14, verse 12. It says, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You have once laid low. You, you who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zephon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead to the depths of the pit. This is Satan, Lucifer, who was an archangel along with Michael and Gabriel. Uh, Bible says that he's the most beautiful angels. And it makes mention that he, he was the worship leader in heaven. And he actually had uh, instruments that were built into his being, into his body. Beautiful. Um, and yet, he became so full of himself that he felt like he should be worshipped instead of being the worshipper. He wanted to be the one to be worshipped because he just got so full of himself. Because he was so gifted and he was uh, so great at worship and the th and that, that, that he now believed, I should be worshipped. I shouldn't be the one leading worship to God, to Jesus. I should be the one to be worshiped. Remember in, um, in, the, in the wilderness, uh, Satan says to Jesus, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you these kingdoms. Right? This didn't start when Satan was on, in, on, on earth. This started with Satan when he was in heaven. He wanted to be worshipped when he was in heaven. And he got so full of himself that God kicked him out of heaven along with a third of the angels. So Satan convinced a third of the angels to follow him and God kicked Satan, Lucifer, uh, and a third of the angels out of heaven to earth. This is why Satan is in the garden he comes up to Eve as a serpent. He's already on earth. God kicks him and a third of the angels out. But he gets so full of himself because he, he forgets that he is a created being. Satan, the created being, wants to be worshipped by the creator. And I think sometimes... 
if we're not careful, we will want to feel like we have it all together, that we're something really, really, really special, and that we're not the created being, mm -hmm. and that we deserve to be worshipped. Everybody should sort of, in some way, um, give deference to us. I'm not suggesting that we don't honor one another. I think that's biblical, and I've talked about that. But you know, like I know, you know people who feel like the sun rises and sets on them. You know those people. And the reality is we all should have a sense of humility because that's the pathway that God wants us to take. Imagine if in our world today that people had this sense of humility like Jesus, who being in the very nature God, the scripture says, uh, didn't see himself equal to God, but humbled himself like a servant. Imagine if people in high places and people in low places humbled themselves. We wouldn't have all of the turmoil, all of the racial tension, all of the stuff that's going on in our world if there was this sense of humility. But what happens is, just like Satan, that pride can easily get into us because we think we're special and we think we're better than somebody or we did something better than somebody and everybody's touting how great we are and you start listening to your own publicity and your head begins to swell and the next thing you know, you are somebody. And then you can put your, your, push your thumb down on other people. Not God. Not godly. Not godly at all. And so God is saying he's wanting us to take the humble position with humility to be able to do what he's called us to do. But be in not only right relationship with him, but be in right relationship with each other. None of us have the responsibility, none of us have the, the, the right to be arrogant and prideful towards somebody. There are a lot of people who do feel like they do, but none of us have that right. We don't belong to ourselves and we don't own anything. So what is it that you have to be prideful of? Everything that we have belongs to God. Every talent that I possess, God gave me. Yeah, I had, to, I had to do some work. But whatever work you had to do, what, whatever talent you were able to cultivate, it started as embryonic in you because God gave it to you. There isn't anything we can take credit for. We are created beings and our lives are given to glorify God. Every aspect of our life is given to glorify God. There isn't any part of our lives that God shouldn't get glory in. When we understand that all that we are, all that we have belongs to Him, it keeps us humble. It keeps us in a position where we realize I can't take credit for anything. And, and, and even more so than that, I don't want to take credit for anything. I actually want to give God all the glory. You know, I think about how, how we sort of put David on a pedestal because he killed Goliath. You know what David said after, before, right before he went out to kill Goliath? He says, the same God who was with me when I killed the lion and the bear is going to be with me when I kill Goliath. So David, in, in his foresight, recognized he couldn't even kill Goliath without God being with him. 
I mean, if, if there was anybody who wanted to sort of be on their high horse to say, hey, look at me, when a whole nation, the, the Israelite nation was running, it could have been David. And yet David says, I don't, I don't even have a chance without God being with me. And so it's, it's in our walk, our humility walk, every single minute of every single hour, of every single day, that keeps our perspective about our relationship with God and our relationship with others in this world correct. When we position ourselves where we think we know more, we think we have more, we think we are more than someone else, then the, the end result is what you see in our world. You see, what you see in our world is a world of the have and the have-nots. The world of, I'm great and you're nothing. That's not what God wants. And I just felt like God wanted me to not skip over that humility part where it says, if my people would humble themselves, the humility requires us to go and look in the mirror and look at our own lives through the lens of God and allow the Holy Spirit to help us work on what we need to work on for our own lives. Not point the finger at so-and-so. So-and-so needs to do this. And you know what? That's probably true. Well, I'm, I'm not suggesting that that's not true. Th there may be groups of people who need to do certain things. That may be true. But what God, is, what God is requiring of us is He's requiring of us to look at our own lives through the, through the lens of the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to help us become the people that He wants us to become. And when we realize that, look, you know what? I got my own junk that I got to deal with in my life. When we become really, really clear about that, we're much less likely to point the finger at somebody else. And we recognize, hmm, that person may not be perfect, but you know what? Neither am I. Neither am I. So as we move forward um, in, a, in, in, the, in the rest of whatever it is that we're, we're dealing with in our world right now, you know, we're still dealing with the racial tension. We still have this issue with the virus um, and economic downturn. So there's so much going on. It's very easy to become uh, all about self. And I, I, I heard someone say, humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. We actually have to put others, in, 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 many, in many respects, uh, above ourselves in a lot of cases. Um, you know, you go to the grocery store, everybody's trying to get, well, not so much toilet paper anymore, but wipes. Maybe you go to the grocery store, there's only one, one thing of wipes left. Maybe you give it to the other person. You know, think about, think about how, how uh, you can be a blessing because of the pathway of humility that you choose to walk. And listen, God is the one who says that he is going to raise us up. Let's look at uh, the scripture in 1 Peter. 1 Peter 5, verse 5 through 6. It says, um, Yes, all of you be submissive to one another, and be clothed with humility. Let me read it. That was the New King, King James Version. Let me see if I can read it in another version that comes up in the NIV. It says, close yourself with humility toward one another. Because, listen to this, God opposes the proud, 
but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Part of the problem is, is I think we feel like we're not getting our share of the pie, our piece of the pie. And we try to work out in our own strength and in our own efforts to make sure that we grab our piece of the pie. That's, that's the world. And God is saying, hey, humble yourselves because I will exalt you at the right time. And if God is saying he's going to exalt us at the right time, then nobody can take away my piece of the pie. I got my piece of, God's got my piece of the pie wrapped up in the oven waiting for me. Nobody, nobody, can, nobody can take my piece of the pie. God's got it. And so I shouldn't try to outdo and be, be better and try to put, put my finger on someone else. It's not trying to be better than somebody else. It's not trying to outdo somebody else. It's about trying to be the best that God has created us to be. And in doing that, and we have a, hum a humility about all of that, uh, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Let me read it again. Clothe yourself with humility toward one another. Not backbite and backstab each other. Those at work, right? Sometimes there are there are, there are bosses who try to pit people against each other to try to get more out of them. Well, you don't fall into that. You have humility toward one another. God will raise you up at the right time. He will be the one to exalt you. And nobody will be able to stop it. Nobody will be able to stop God from exalting you. And let's look at Luke 9, verse 23. Then he said to them all, this is Jesus, then he said to them, all, to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Let me read it again. Whoever wants to be my disciple. Well, we said we wanted to be his disciple when we gave our life to Jesus. So, so if we're in the kingdom, then we're his disciples. Jesus is saying, if you want to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself, take up our cross daily, and follow him. Deny ourselves. And, and this idea of denying ourselves simply means our life isn't just about us. That our lives actually ought to be first and foremost to serve the purposes of God. But when we, when, we, when we have humility towards one another, we actually make our lives about others too. That it's just not about us. It's just not about me and myself and I, about what I want, about what I think, about what I want to do and where I want to go and how I think things ought to be. It actually is, you know, what does someone else think about this? What does God think about this? And making these adjustments in our own hearts and in our own minds will help us live peaceable lives. Because we're not saying, I don't have to have my way. I'm not trying to be better than someone else. I'm not trying to be competitive towards someone else. I'm just wanting, I'm just wanting God to use me in whatever endeavors he's given me. I want to be the best that God has created me to be. And in doing so, God will raise me up. God will lift me up. God will exalt me in due time. And, and, and to be okay with that. And that gives us a sense of peace. And we don't get stressed out because we're trying to strive to be somebody or trying to strive to get something. I've already read to you that our lives don't belong to us and everything that we get ultimately doesn't belong to, 
to, to us either. It all belongs to God. So whatever we're striving to become, whatever we're striving to get, we already belong to God. Whatever we have already is His. So it takes this whole, this whole striving out of us. And we, we, we can be content with pursuing with passion, pursuing with passion um, the desires that God has placed in our hearts, knowing that He is the one who's fueling us with His empowerment by the Holy Spirit. That's our life. That's, that's, that's the, the life of humility. That's the pathway that God's got us on. And I think if, if, if we can stay on that path, if we can remind ourselves daily, Lord, I belong to you. Everything that I have belongs to you. My life is about serving your purposes. That will change our perspective about how we live our lives. And, 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 and our attitudes toward other people. And I think that's what God wants. I think he wants that from our world. And of course, we as the citizens of the kingdom of God, he's called us to be an example of it. Amen. Let's just pray. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy and your, your perspective. I pray that we would have the heart to humble ourselves, to, to not try to get back at someone, to not try to outdo someone, to not try to make ourselves bigger than what we are, to, to not try to be prideful like Satan was, but that we, we would be have a degree of humility, just like Jesus did. And we, we would go about serving our purposes in every way. And that in due season, you will raise us up to whatever it is you've called us to. You're the one who's going to raise us up. And we will wait patiently and we will humble ourselves. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Maybe you're watching this and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, but you want, you want one. Well, the Bible tells us to do three things. To repent, confess and to believe. And so if you pray this prayer with me, you can become a citizen of the kingdom of God. And it's this, Lord, I repent for all of my sins. I turn away from my sins and I, toward, and I turn toward Jesus. Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart. I confess that you've um, uh, are the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and, um, and make your home in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You were part of the kingdom of God. God bless you. Thank you, K1, for uh, being all that you are. God bless you and take care of yourselves.